So we're talking about this piece, Hercules Strang Strangling the Serpents, and um, I was saying that some of it in some way is very similar to a lacoon in that Greek sculpture. You can see the movement of the snakes. And if you remember in this piece, this is about, it's a warning as well about the guy, the priest, and his sons who tried to give up the idea of the Trojan horse. And I tried to tell them that it was people trying to come out of the Trojan horse and defeat them. And he died because of the gods. Well, there's some kind of similarity here going on about death and serpents. Um... And if you remember, I said the context is about the sort of warning of someone who's not willing to engage with the rejected the right of Bacchus being torn apart. And on this side, a um, mortal, the son of a mortal woman in Jupiter, Zeus, who survives. So there's something about the will of the gods and surviving and things that are happening in this uh, warning of death and happening in this room and you can see the detail that they had these painted columns they're creating a sense of architectural space in 2d by the way they were using perspective and things to make it feel like this is um the first layer closer than it's back then you have a painting that's like a window into the other world these other windows into the other world of like architectural space very 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 detailed frescoes happening here so this actually takes us through the Roman chapter. Um, there's a documentary that I usually love to show. I uh, wish I could show, but I have no way to um, be able to get you guys to be able to watch it all together because it's not available in our library. And um, But I want to show this part of it, a quick video here. This is the episode I usually like. If you have um, uh, access to Amazon Prime, you can watch it. It's called Empire Without Limit by Mary Beard. This is Mary Beard. It's a BBC documentary. And she talks about Rome a lot. This chapter, this is about, this episode's about the end of the Roman Empire. And I'm going to see if we can pull up this video real quick here. This is a bit about how... Um, Constantine, who we looked at here in the sculpture, that's his head and his hands and stuff we looked at. This is why, about his decision to adopt Christianity across the Roman Empire, which we'll remember was the Edict of Milan. I'm showing you guys this because it ties into the next chapter 10, um, which is still in certain ways kind of about Rome. Calculate. 
executive decision to back what looked like the winning side. The political logic of this, whatever's going on inside Constantine head, is that the circle has been squared. The universal empire, instead of fighting with the universal church, has done a deal with it. From now on, empire and church are going to walk side by side. One way of seeing this is as a revolution. Fundamental aspects of being a Roman have changed. Hierarchy, faith, morality, sex. But in another way, Constantine has reinvented the original model of Roman power around a new god. So why I showed you that was because Constantine is coming towards the end of sort of the Roman Empire as a unified whole, and he had switched the... Um, I talked to you about how you made... Constantinople, which is Istanbul, uh, modern day, into the capital. Well, there's a lot of things happen towards the end of the empire. Um, if you watch the documentary, it's interesting. It talks about how barbarian hordes were coming in, but they weren't really necessarily barbarians in the sense of like uneducated and totally like Neanderthals, and that um, the Roman Empire and the East and the West were getting split up and yada yada, but her kind of theory in that in that documentary that that I just showed you a piece of is that basically the Roman Empire kind of um, disappeared into other things and then it continued on in the east eastern part of it for a really long time. And they thought of themselves as Roman emperors, um, even though they were Byzantines. And so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about in chapter ten. So you're going to want to start reading chapter ten. And I just want to give you a little preview of that and then remind you of that date that you want to know of the Edict of Milan and kind of that important moment in history that um, we'll reference in chapter 10 as well with this guy here that she's talking about. So the next chapter begins us talking about um, churches and uh, Christian faith because it's depicted in a lot of um, the art from that era and this kind of change that was happening. Um, in the art in the Roman Empire and also in the world and different art that we'll look at throughout med medieval Europe and things in the medieval ages up to the Gothic. So chapter 10, 11, 12, um, all of, and 13, we'll talk about some of that type of stuff. So a little bit of a change happening around this, huge change happening around this time period. Um, and we'll talk more about it in chapter 10 when I get the doc, um, show you that slideshow and maybe if I can find that documentary, I'll post it onto the page. But I've been able to find a place where you guys can view the whole thing because I just show it usually from my own Amazon Prime account. So, all right, guys, hopefully you're doing well and uh, staying safe out there. Take care.